forget everything you've learned about the Big Bang, because in reality, we live inside a black hole. But what does that mean, and how is it even possible? A new groundbreaking theory gives us the answers. Are you ready to learn the incredible truth about the origin of the universe? Then sit back, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and be sure to watch our video all the way to the end. The Question About the Origin In your everyday life, you receive the most different impressions, whether it's busy streets, vibrant cities, or just the clouds in the sky. But have you ever asked yourself where all this actually comes from? Well, for the majority of the researchers, the answer to this question is clear nowadays. The universe and all the things which grew later in it originated in the context of the much-quoted Big Bang. If one follows this theory, then matter, space, and time emerged from the original singularity 13.8 billion years ago. Briefly to the classification, in the physics and in astronomy, the singularity designates places where the gravity is so extreme that the curvature of the space-time diverges, or in other words, is infinite. But how can we even know today, so many million years later, how the birth of the cosmos took place in detail? We owe this to a special characteristic of the universe, which it already shows since its emergence. It expands unrestrained. As a result, it is possible for the experts to look at the expansion of the universe backward and to calculate back to that point which embodied the exit of the universe. However, it should be noted at this point that the corresponding hypotheses do not deal at all with the Big Bang itself, but with the development of the early universe immediately afterwards. In detail, we move here in a temporal order of magnitude of a so-called Planck time, thus about 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds to about 400,000 years after the origin of the cosmos. Criticism and Doubts But if we look now beyond the edge of the plate of the theoretical calculations, another question arises. Are there also tangible proofs which support the correctness of the Big Bang hypothesis? The alleged killer argument which the researchers lead in this case listens to the name Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. This is a nearly isotropic, that is, direction-independent radiation, which fills the entire universe and which originated shortly after the Big Bang. Although generally accepted, we should not forget one thing. The Big Bang still raises enormous questions. Researchers who question the established theories and put forward alternative explanations often complain that their explanations receive little or no attention in the scientific journals. Even more, those who express their well-founded doubts about the Big Bang Theory would be defamed by their other colleagues in the field and even labeled as crazy. And this, although the criticism already begins before the actual Big Bang, thus the unsettled questions already begin with the how and the why of the whole. What has led to the fact that 13.8 billion years ago, something suddenly originated from nothing? How is it all possible that something forms from nothing? How was the tiny primordial germ of the cosmos formed? Was the whole process subject to a higher trigger, or was it all just pure coincidence? And what is with the missing time, with those fractions of seconds in which the primeval cosmos must have enlarged itself in a breakneck speed? How exactly this process took place, and whether this cosmic inflation has occurred at all, is everything else than undisputed. Also, the puzzling discovery which the James Webb Telescope registered some months ago, we should not discard at this point. So the $10 billion device tracked down six reddish shimmering points of light, which turned out to be early galaxies in the aftermath. In detail, these gravitationally bound structures already existed when the universe was just 500 to 700 million years old. The problem? For this early time of formation, the galaxies were simply much too massive. Or in other words, they contradict practically all assumptions of the usual cosmology and should not exist, strictly speaking, at all. But is now the universe wrong, or is it our official models? You know the answer. Against this background, it's not surprising that more and more experts are currently abandoning the Big Bang Theory and instead looking for alternative explanations. The most exciting, and for many, probably the most disturbing hypothesis reads, We live in the inside of a black hole. 
black holes. But how is this at all possible? How can it be that our universe is in a black hole? If these cosmic killing machines destroy literally everything and everyone, well, they don't do that at all. In order to get the irretrievable maelstrom of a black hole, an object has to enter the so-called event horizon. Once this happens, there is no escape. Nothing can cross the event horizon of a black hole from the inside to the outside, not even light. Outside this death zone, however, the gravity monsters behave like any other mass body in the universe, which is why other celestial bodies can orbit them on stable paths without any problems. Even more, in the meantime, it is considered certain that practically every galaxy center is adorned with a supermassive black hole, whereby the invisible monsters there play an important role within the galactic development. But what actually gives these bizarre formations their legendary powers? Well, the immense gravity which prevails in the realms of a black hole is due to its extreme compactness. An example, a black hole with the mass of the Sun would have an event horizon diameter of just 6 kilometers. One with the mass of the Earth would be about the size of a marble. The formation background of stellar black holes is largely deciphered. They are formed when a large star reaches the end of its life and ejects its outer shells in an explosive supernova. Thereupon, the remaining stellar core collapses under the weight of its own gravitational pressure into an extremely compact object, a stellar black hole. However, things are somewhat different in the case of their monstrous counterparts. These exceed the mass of the Sun by a factor of millions or even billions, and we still have no clear answer to the question of how these monsters are formed in the first place. In the Belly of the Gravity Monster Granted, the properties of black holes are breathtaking. After all, they impressively demonstrate to us the brute forces at work in the universe. But what leads some scientists to the assumption that our universe slumbers inside such a structure? If you like, then everything began with the question about the before. Many experts believe that this ominous before did not exist at all. Stephen Hawking was convinced that the time itself began only with the Big Bang. The discussions which concern themselves with something which existed before would possess no scientific basis. It is about a state which is simply not tangible for our human mind. However, some scientists who show a somewhat alternative point of view are not fobbed off so easily. In particular, Nikodem Poplovsky of the University of New Haven counts to it. If one follows the thoughts of the theoretical physicist, then the entire mass and energy of the developing cosmos was united immediately before the Big Bang in an inconceivably dense but nevertheless finite point. One could call this primeval spot, consequently, the seed of the cosmos. This seed was possibly billions times smaller than every particle which man has observed up till now. And nevertheless, the cosmic primeval seed united everything that was necessary for the formation of all the other particles. But how did this seed originate? From which galaxies, star systems, planets, and finally, we grew later? In this respect, Poplowski states that it was born in one of the most extreme places we can imagine at all, in the belly of a black hole. The Big Bounce Before we go into more detail about this exciting theory, a short insertion. In the recent past, many researchers have come to the conclusion that our cosmos is by no means the only universe. Accordingly, it is possible that our universe is only the tiny link in an infinite chain of other universes. If we now draw the bow at this point to Albert Einstein, we recognize what could go on at the bottom of a black hole. An infinitely dense and infinitely small point can be calculated a singularity. The problem, in nature, such states and places simply do not exist. Even if the hypothetical concepts are excellently suited to theoretically decipher the majority of the universe, they reach their limits with the enormous forces that prevail. For example, in the interior of a black hole, the same, however, also applies to the birth of our cosmos. Poplovsky states, in this respect, that the matter which a black hole necessarily sucks in is compressed in its interior until it is no longer possible. The cosmic primordial seed, which develops in the context of this, 
is perhaps unimaginably small, but in contrast to the singularity real, so the physicist. In detail, the process of compression comes to a halt as black holes rotate at an insane pace. While the object spins at close to the speed of light, extreme torsional forces act on the seed inside. So not only is it tiny and unimaginably massive, but in the same breath, it is also compressed and twisted in on itself. Now it is conceivable that the seed will literally burst open. In the course of a process that Poplowski calls not a big bang, but a big bounce. Or in other words, a black hole could actually embody the transitional state between two universes, a kind of cosmic door that can only be passed through from one side. If a man would fall into the inside of a black hole, he could find himself afterwards unexpectedly in a completely different cosmos. Well, or at least, the tattered parts which were left of him then. At this point, Poplowski points out again explicitly that this cosmic world is not in our universe. The black hole is only the connecting piece. Transferred to our universe, this means we could be the result of a previous universe. Thus, the seed of the mother cosmos which grew up in the belly of the black hole went through its big bounce about 13.8 billion years ago. And although the universe has been expanding incessantly since time immemorial, it is conceivable that we are still slumbering beyond the event horizon of a black hole. And with that, thanks for watching. Feel very free to hit the like and subscribe buttons to never miss another one of our videos. What do you think? Does Nikodem Pavlovsky's revolutionary hypothesis seem plausible to you? Or do you still hold to the Big Bang Theory?